Welcome back to Virginia this morning in the age-old debate about evolution, science, and faith. Our next guest says both sides have left out interesting parts of the tale. In his new book, Evolution 2.0, he reveals decades of underreported discoveries. And he's offering insight with his code model. We welcome engineer and best-selling author Perry Marshall to Virginia this morning. Perry, it's an absolute pleasure. Nice to see you. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Fascinating topic, my friend. This is something that has fascinated you to the point where you have been delving into it now for more than a decade. Yes, yes. Um, it started when my brother, who moved to China to be a missionary, four years later was almost an atheist. And we're sitting in a bus in China having an argument, and it turns into an evolution creation argument. And I go, Brian, come on. By the way, we were both pastor's kids, okay? Mm -hmm. So... I said, Brian, look at the hand at the end of your arm. You don't think that this is like an accumulation of random accidents, do you? And he goes, hold on, buddy. Just a minute on that. And he pushes right back on me. And he, go, he gives me the Darwinian explanation. And I didn't really agree with what he was saying. But what I knew was I didn't know. And I also knew that lots of biologists would agree with him more than they would agree with me. And I said, I'm going to find out. I'm Where do you out. begin? Because this has been a topic that, really a hot button topic. Um, emotions get very high as well. They do. They do. It, it was very, very confusing at first. And I would go back and forth and I would read both sides. And I started buying dozens of books. And I things clicked into place when I suddenly realized that DNA is code. And in a previous career, I had written an Ethernet book, you know, the blue cable that plugs in your computer. And I suddenly realized that there's an immense depth of comparisons between the DNA in your cells, the code in your cells, and how ones and zeros go back and forth on the Internet. And it, it's an amazing level of parallels. And so DNA is software. And all of the rules of software apply to DNA. And suddenly, I knew how I could start to break this down. What does this mean by underreported statistics? Well, so <clears throat> you always hear that there's just random copying errors and mutations in DNA, and then survival of the fittest cleans it all up, and everything gets better and better. But, but what you don't hear about is, for example, when you take antibiotics, the doctor says, finish this done or else the bugs will become super bugs. But what people don't know is what's actually going on. So if you don't finish your antibiotics, here's what happens. That uh, bacterium sits there and it goes, this antibiotic is killing me. I got to pump this poison out and it will go look around for some other cell in your body that has a pump and it will pull the DNA out of that cell, read the code that codes for a pump, build a pump, pump the poison out, start sharing the code with all of its bacteria friends, and replicate new cells with pumps. And if you let that happen, you're not going to be able to kill it. And this is why we have an antibiotics problem. And this is happening because cells can do more programming in 12 minutes than a team of software engineers can do in 12 weeks. That's just fascinating. In 12 minutes? In 12 minutes. Uh, literally, what I described can happen in, in 30 to 60 minutes. What does this mean, this, uh, this debate right now? Is, is this debate evolving? I, well, I think so. It's, it's why I wrote the book, because there's a ton of science about how cells reprogram their DNA. Living things are incredibly adaptive. And germs, cells, cells in your body, your immune system will cut, splice, rearrange DNA, move genes around and reprogram themselves to adapt to a situation. And so, you know, you versus disease, it's an arms race on both sides, and cells are smart. Where is the debate between you and your brother stand right now? You're still talking to him, I hope. You know, my, my brother's an agnostic at this point. He loves the book. He loves the science in the book. It's a fascinating science story, and I really hope that we can move this debate from where it's been, mm -hmm. which is you know, Ken Ham and Bill Nye, to we need to understand this because cancer, genetic diseases, nutrition, all of these things tie very intimately into the intelligence of cells. Where does this debate go for you? Um, I want people to know 
this is the biggest untold story in the history of science. I think if people of faith really knew about evolution, they would be preaching it from the rooftops. And if atheists knew this, they would maybe be reluctant because the cell in the body is such an amazing machine. Congratulations on this book, Perry. It's really, it's a fascinating read. Thank you. All right. Listen, Perry Marshall's new book is called Evolution 2.0, now available. Thank you so much, Perry.